James Calm here. Half-assed, half-assed, half-assed start reporter, the guy on the bike. And we're cruising through Little Italy, headed towards the Bowery. And uh, it might seem like we're spending a lot of time visiting galleries on the Bowery lately, but in my time here in New York, I've seen certain streets that uh, take on a very important part of the scene. Remember when I got here, West Broadway and Soho had maybe 15 galleries on it. Then uh, West 24th Street in Chelsea had, still has many galleries. East 10th Street and the East Village had its run twice in the early 50s and then in the early 80s. Williamsburg had Bedford Avenue and now it's the Bowery. The Bowery has a long and uh, rich tradition in the art world. A lot of famous artists have lived along here. But one of the things that the Bowery has now that none of these other streets that I mentioned as far as an anchor institution is this place right here. The new museum, which opened up about 11 years ago and has changed the entire <laughs> complexion of the neighborhood. We're going to run in and visit an exhibition right here at the Andrew Edlin Gallery and the exhibition we're going to look at is Melvin Way, The Cocaine Files Dossier, curated by Andrew Castruzzi. Well, <laughs> it's a lively crowd, considering it's been uh, Grizzly and kind of dank all day long here in New York. Well, I first started seeing examples of Melvin's work, I guess probably at the Outsider Art Fair maybe four or five years ago. And if you, uh, have paid attention to the calm report of the rough cut you know I'm a big fan of of outsider art so I know I had to make a point of uh, coming in and seeing the show this piece is titled Ectopicus Ectopism 2016 Ballpoint Pen and Marker on Paper Scotch Tape. Well, uh, Melvin uses a lot of various kinds of uh, notations. He's got mathematical equations, chemistry, other things that he's working with. to see okay I am not a I am not a chemist and I probably passed whatever chemistry classes I had in in college with about a C minus maybe but uh, I think the interesting thing is that uh, the works do have some kind of a graphical uh, schematic nature to them and they say that uh, I guess Melvin has been living a pretty hard life I guess it says that he was born in South Carolina in 1954 and has spent a lot of time traveling back and forth between there and New York this is titled Snakehead and 
she's been homeless for a certain amount of time during that period. Also, that uh, you know, there's a certain intimacy about these pieces that I find uh, appealing. A lot of this, he's theoretically, from what it said in the press release, he works on these things sometimes for days, weeks, months, even years, and uh, keeps them in his pocket. Or pockets, I'm saying near his heart. This is titled Fluoride. And it's ballpoint pen marker on paper with scotch tape. So I was thinking that in a certain way these uh, these strange calculations, these strange formulas almost uh, function as a kind of uh, talisman. Okay, we've got a nice selection of pieces here. You know, I'm not going to look at all of these, but I like this piece. saying that some <laughs> some of these formulas might have something to do with various uh, chemical compounds dealing with cocaine I don't know well uh, we came in here and saw I guess at this point it's been a couple of exhibitions by Susan Te Karenge King and uh, Andrew Edlin is maybe one of the premier galleries that's dealing with outsider art. This piece is titled Cocktails. Let's look a little closer. This cranberry fish water, water shell chocolate honey. Sir Melvin way way <laughs> okay lemon molecule h o o h h o oh my gosh this will send me back to my periodic tables A lot of these have been uh, folded up, and I guess maybe he salvages the paper and uh, keeps it held together with scotch tape. And uh, this is titled Dready Meat. Melvin is also kind of a uh, poet trickster with his texts. Uh, there's also a nice quality with the, the bleeding of the pigment here. I don't know whether that, if you keep keep some of these uh, marker pens or the lines from the marker pens in your pocket and your paper gets sweaty, maybe things start to bleed. This is a beautiful little piece. Untitled. 2010 to 2013 ballpoint pen marker on paper. This is just two and a half inches by three inches. Let's see if we can read anything. No. This is titled Kiki Hale Hun. Came Ababa Buku came. <laughs> okay, that's tricky. Uh, so I like the way that he uh, kind of pastes these little panels together. And something like that almost makes me think of a Picasso. Uh, 
untitled. Six by three and a half inches. You know, there's a kind of a, a desperate uh, urge to try to understand, to try to uh, decipher these things. And although I guess I would have to just uh, go along with enjoying them graphically, I would say that they do kind of call you out and ask you to get your your decoder ring out. It's a group of uh, canvases and canvas paper pieces. These are just oil on canvas and I would say that they're probably about 16 by 20 maybe. Yeah, that's right. Well, as I understand, uh, someone has, maybe one of Melvin's friends has uh, gotten him to uh, work on some more conventional materials. All the goddesses collectively, 2015 to 2017. All the goddesses collectively, goddesses against diseases, protectress, the horny ghost. <laughs> they got some more chemical formulas. Chirchez Sarah, Sarah Karen. Tape Flash Quicksilver. Uh, well, I'd like to see Melvin carry on with the the painting. These have got some nice uh, nice touches here. Classical nature, goddess nymph, Hamadrad, the wood nymph. Nice. This is titled Color TV February 9th, 2000. Paint and ink on paper. 20 by 16. And uh, this looks like he's collaged in a photo stat here. Also an interesting grouping of works. These are a little different. So these are more like uh, regular drawings rather than the uh, the talismans that he would be carrying around with him. There's these a narration here too. Because they're numbered, and this is the key here. It's the key. Yeah, and, and this is the key. It's zero to five, and so it's more narrative here. It's more dreamy. Are you the curator? Yes. Okay. Titled that Dow was saying this is the key. These are nine by twelve. 
It's a colored pencil on paper. And uh, the curator said that these were done while he was uh, medicated. This piece, number four. Yes. Looks like the uh, the diagram for the Kabbalah there. If you think about your dream in the morning, you wake up and you don't. Bethel, the house of Ensof, God. Peak experience, the most the state moment of your life is the ultimate Sinclair. So you see different things. I live with this word when I discover something. If you read, I finally read it in detail. And I want to scream. I think this is Melvin right here. Maybe we'll come back and snag him if we can. Hospital card, 1998. Ballpoint pen on business card. Yeah, I often go to shows and I see young artists that are trying to uh, kind of manufacture some kind of authenticity, some kind of uh, patina, and uh, usually they can't do it. But a lot of this work has a great, uh, great sense of the human, the, the touch, the kind of uh, patina that you can only get by handling and touching and rubbing and thinking about and looking at and noodling more untitled this one is three by four inches also I think it's interesting that uh, Melvin has been kicking around in New York and I think they're saying South Carolina for years making work like this and you know like most people struggling with day-to-day -day challenges but uh, it appears that in the last as I said four or five years people have started to notice what he's doing this is titled CHCOOCH2 so again, we've got our uh, chemical formulas. Oh, is that the way uh, the molecules come together with the various atomic elements? Murphy's Law, the faculty, corporate America, Seal, chew, shake, shake a bit, shake it for me. In the raw three, Murphy's Law four, number one five, just like a baby, six, time is here to stay. <laughs> Melvin's also got a, uh, a poetic uh, sensibility there. It's another nice one. Criminal, suicidal, demented, Ideology. It's titled Metamorph Rocks, 1992. You know, uh, something like this that's been around for uh, 25, 27 years. Uh, I wonder how this got preserved. Now this is the kind of work that I saw that I was intrigued with when I first bumped into uh, Melvin's work. This is titled Hezad Deruzakor. 
1998 ballpoint pen and tape on paper. And yes, here we've got, uh, okay, some lines of text. I don't know whether that's code. And then underneath it, we've got the uh, dots and dash, door third, bob, bob, do, bob. And there's a very nice uh, light. I guess that maybe that's some kind of marker pen. It almost looks like watercolor. Three and a half by seven inches. I was talking about um, young artists that I know that are trying to manufacture this kind of authenticity. And, uh, you know, it goes back to the whole question of Jean Dubuffet and his ideas about art brood and and as Art Brew became more recognized, a lot of people were trying to get in on the action and he had to step back and reclassify a lot of people and various things. This is CL23H, 1989 ballpoint, pen on paper with scotch tape. Five and a half by six and a half inches. You know, just graphically, the way this is laid out on the page is great. Uh, little images he's got sort of laid in there is wonderful. Okay, Maybe we'll capture a few snippets of conversation. Okay, periodic table of elements. It's called AGNO3. And I was going to say, some of these look like they might have been uh, Xeroxed. Valerie wants to interview you to walk around the gallery and give her a tour and explain to her when it's quiet. And I'll be here. Yes. 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 Actually, deal with the compound of how you would put cocaine together. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. You can't take the those... title so literally. What do you call you? <laughs> these are these are all new. It's, a, it's the files. It's new, the dossier. The files. Brand new recipes. Okay. All okay. person has them. Is me myself in the past tense. It's poetry. Then, it's music. I understand it's sunrise, that. Um, Thelonious Monk. It's Grandma you... Z. Mary. It's George Clinton. It's Funkadelic. I, I, Curtis Mayfield, that's who Curtis I was thinking Mayfield, of. Right? Oh. Um, and so you've been working on this group of work for, I think there were pieces that go all the way back to the 80s, is over, that right? Over 30 years. Over 30 years of work. Yeah, to, to, to change my thought. Over 30 years. And you were saying that some of these pieces you actually work on for many years and you you fold them up and keep them in your pocket and... Yeah, something like that. A couple of years, yeah. To, to the There's a lot of sweat. <laughs> you, when you take the frames up, you could still smell. I could smell a perfume. <laughs> <laughs> the, the blood, right sweat, and tears. The blood, sweat, and tears. I am, I am a fan of human beings, and so that's one of the reasons that I, I like uh, work that has got the touch of the human being and everything else that goes on with being so a human dramatic. being. They protect you. It's like and, 
also, you're, you're working with a lot of just ballpoint pens and magic markers and things like that, so you're not getting into the more exotic stuff, except these are some new pieces that you're dealing with oil paint, so you're going to... I used to be down with oil paint. I was real profoundly renowned you know, sure. with the brush. Are you going to be pursuing more larger stuff with oil paint? Or? No, not really. Okay, well, Melvin... <laughs> Congratulations again. Thanks for taking a little time to talk to us. The show looks great. All right, thank you. Oh, there's Mimi Gross. James Com reporting on Melvin Way, the Cocaine Files dossier, 1989 to 2017. Here at the Andrew Edlin Gallery on the Bowery. You can leave your thoughts, ideas, talking points, suggestions, critiques below, but you've got to help me. Thank you, Kate. Whoa! Thank you. Thank you. Africa. Oh, beat.